All aboard! All aboard! Ah, well, hello there. So, you're getting on this train, huh? You know, I've been conducting this train for a good couple of years now. Been through a lot with her. I remember the I got nothing up my butt incident back in 2019. There was also the Florida man who threw a Bible at a police officer. Oh, and don't get me started about the year 2020. Oh, boy. <laughs> so listen, if you're new here, I gotta read this, uh, this piece of paper for you. It's sort of a, sort of a legal thing, you know? Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Warning. The following show may feature some adult language and adult scenarios that are not suitable for those under the age of 18 to 21 years old. If you are under this age, please consult your parents and or legal guardians for permission to listen to this show. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Well, with that out of the way, will you still be getting on? <laughs> Excellent! Well, let me just punch your ticket for you. And welcome to Trademark's Trainwreck. I'm a foot ahead, or a foot behind. Depending on your perspective, yes you are. Good evening passengers, and welcome to Trademark's Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. With me here tonight is Random Greymane. Uh, I've got my foot in the door. Yes you do. And Sherlock. Is that how you broke it this time? Yeah, for those I... <laughs> for those who haven't caught on, Gray Main has injured his foot yet again. It's the yes, same it the one. Same one. It's the same it fucking the same foot. one. Yes. I am. Uh, I'm actually a super villain, and I'm sitting in in this universe for uh, Samuel Jackson. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's um. Yeah, damn neuropathy and having to walk all over the VA and uh, it just yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know at this point. <laughs> long story. I... Long story short. Uh, Greymane told uh told me the story uh behind the scenes, and from what I gathered, uh Greymane is unable to feel uh a majority of sensation in the foot that he got one of his toes removed from. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it will, uh, pain will flare up, but other times it's just, uh, not there. And so he mm. did not feel that he had broken his foot from a shit ton of walking he had done and or some other assortment of activities. He went to the doctor and the doctor went, we're going to rip the bandaid off. Here's the bad news. And he shows him a fucking x-ray. <laughs> you showed yes. us the x-ray and there's a little nodule on the side of that. What is that? Which, where? Okay, hold on. Let me. The toe that's get to... broken. The toe that's broken. Um, no, the is it... toe that's the toe that's broken is actually is actually my big toe. Okay, oh. you're talking about the you're talking about the crook right at the top there. I'm talking about um, you know how it bulges just to the right, or are you talking about the space just to the left? Here, I need to find the picture again. Also, uh, I must point out while everyone's uh. Finding shit to probably no, explain I'm, themselves. No, I'm saying, uh, look. Sorry, you first. 
is you go down the phalange, like halfway down the big toe, that looks like there's a bulge, like some kind of bulbous growth on the side of your the side of that bone. Yeah, no, that's a, believe it or not, this is actually um, an ortho picture, an orthogonal picture of my leg. Um, so it's at, an, it's at an angle. And that actually has not, um, give me one second here. Let me see if I can find it. Well, yeah, again, while you uh, look that up, apparently the breakage in uh, Gray's fucking foot is in, it is right where his toe used to be. <laughs> Just no, right. No. That's oh, not the... where it is. It oh, is I further, misheard you. It is, it is further down where the toe joins the... Um, where the where the base of the big toe all the way down into the into the foot itself where that joins the foot bones itself is where I broke it. Okay. Um, this keeps up. I keep telling people this keeps up, and I'll be able to go and and leave like cryptid footprints in the uh, in the in the forest. <laughs> all right, what's that footprint? That's not human. <laughs> Gonna get those finding Bigfoot like nut jobs they have on this on the history channel or the discovery channel i know where he is he's living in illinois (laughs) see i get so insulted by those things i get so insulted by the history channel back like i i just stopped yeah it's it's not ancient alien things was amusing at first but then they just like went over the fucking deep end and you guys remember that bigfoot show right that finding bigfoot which one yes which one? Yeah, there was there was like a okay. Ton. Well, a good majority of the most of those people were straight stupid. Well, yes. Yep. I mean, I mean, it's not even like this level of they have a PhD and they be, and they started going crazy and believe crazy things like th- that one guy, you know, aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens, aliens. Not him. He at least you know has a PhD. These people are just straight dumb as shit. Mm-hmm. And then you've got like. Hulu now deciding to do this because I see this on my YouTube apps all ads all the time about like a Bigfoot story where this guy who's a freaking stoner is like, I heard about these two guys who ran a, a, a like a pot farm up in Oregon and they got killed by a Bigfoot. <laughs> it's even weirder where they when they branch out and start looking for other creatures like the fucking Chupacabra and the Mothman. Why the Mothman? The Mothman was never an ancient cryptid myth. No, no, he was very, very modern. Um, of course, very he, modern. So yeah, but he's now a popular. Now he's a popular urban myth, so everyone's got to go. Oh, we got to hunt down the Mothman. Well, he's a popular myth, and he's a game character. He stole my so sandwich. Like, no, but um, if you look Sherlock at the at the middle picture I posted, uh, you'll see that that that's a top down. And what you're seeing is actually the edge of the uh, of the joint. Oh, okay. Uh, as it's twisted around, so they, uh, yeah, that that can, orthogonal that orthogonal that orthogonal makes it look really weird. <laughs> for for our YouTube, I can honestly but... understand snapping the toe, you know, the upper part of the toe itself. But how did you get to the base of the goddamn phalange? Um, I. Because gray is just there that is good. there is okay. There's a physical explanation. Okay, the explanation is that I am overweight. Okay, and that because I don't have any sensation in those foots, I don't have. Um, and this is both legs, by the way. I don't have the feedback to oh, you put your foot down too too hard. You know how how sometimes when you put your foot down too hard. You know, you go, ow, crap, ow, you know, and it's that short sting of pain. Um, mm. I don't have that, okay, which means that I can stomp, okay, harder than my foot is prepared to give the inform, you know, give the uh, to pre- prepared to to balance the weight from, you know, prepared to absorb the shock from. Okay, and... the old college try, but something's gonna snap. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So the other the other answer is that this is when I put my foot down, you know, this is for all the pagan people. When I put my foot down magically, 
this is the foot I use. So it's got a little bit more wear and tear on it. Um, <laughs> and that's a, that's a whole pagan response that is absolutely not based in anything other than, than having some faith in actual magic and, and so forth. So, mm. There's oh, your sure. amusement for the day, people. Yeah, <laughs> right. We need to get it going here. Yeah, I think that's a good place as any to start the usual spiel. If you're an old fan of the train wreck, you know how this song and dance goes. This is a show where uh, I find dumb internet news over the course of a week and show them to my friends. We point and laugh at it. We got the softcore material in just a bit, followed by the hardcore material, and we've got musical interludes somewhere in the middle of all of that. One of which is coming up in just a moment, unless we have anything else we want to talk about. Nope. Hello, my Let's baby. Hello, today. my honey. Hello, my ragtime. Oh, sorry. Different song and dance. Well done. Well, on that note, we'll be right back with Trademark Strain right here on Celestia Radio. I'll fan all the time. Except when uh, we've got one foot on a, in the grave and one on the banana peel. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if you're going to do a 3D series or redo a 3D series in 4K, make sure that you remove the fuzz from the models so that they don't look like fucking Muppets. That's all I'm saying. I'm looking at you, Star Wars Rebels. Mm -hmm. But what if you actually took the old Muppet show and rendered it in 4K? Would they look even more Muppets? Oh, God. No, they would look fantastic. (laughs) If 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 you were able to find native native film footage to do that rendering. Um, this is the fight that, uh, J. Michael Straczynski has been having with Babylon 5, okay? It took him years, decades, to even get somebody to even acknowledge that they had the original film footage for Babylon 5, okay? And as long as they use the original film footage, which was well beyond 4K's, um, grain, okay, they can re-render for 4K and it will look amazing. And they have supposedly done some of that. Okay, but the problem is that it's on HBO Max and I'm not paying for another goddamn streaming service. But the, the point <clears throat> is is that is that yeah. Okay, the point is it is that you have to have the original to do that in the first place, otherwise it looks like ass. So. Yep. Anywho, welcome back to Trademark Train Wreck, everybody, where uh, we discuss uh, how much 4K fucking blows if it's done incorrectly uh, behind the scenes. All bad and... rendering, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for us to calm down now about 4K and talk about some dumb shit that's going on. I've got some uh, news coming from Brooklyn right here, where apparently they're sure. dealing with some uh, pretty weird weather down there. Apparently. It's rain and weed. Hallelujah. Dealer tosses trash bag full of weed off Brooklyn roof to keep it from robbers. Happy pedestrians scramble off with it. A a dealer's getting robbed, so he decides to just toss his weed out off of a roof? Uh, Apparently. I got video about it. That's a level of pettiness that, you know... You know, fuck you, I'm not going to let you have my weed. I'll, I'd rather give it away to f- for free. So this uh, happened June 16th, 2021. Let's take a look. A dealer threw a this garbage... Is Brooklyn, New York, right? Uh, yeah, yep. Brooklyn. <clears throat> Why is he a dealer? He's. It's legal there now. It's been legal for a while. Well, let's take a look. Um, let's take a yeah. look. A dealer threw a garbage bag full of pot off a Brooklyn roof to keep it out of the hands of armed robbers, only to have pedestrians snatch the weed from the sidewalk and run off. Video released by the NYPD on Tuesday shows the bag land on the sidewalk June 1st, right before three people take the pot and flee. The dealer, Li Shengji, I apologize if I mispronounced that, 29, set up an 11.15 a.m. June 1st meeting with two men on the rooftop of a three-story building at 8th Avenue and 46th Street in Sunset Park. 
He planned to sell the 19 pounds of weed for $20,000, but the buyers pulled a gun, then punched and kicked him in a tussle to grab the bag. That's when Xi hurled it from the rooftop, raining weed on the sidewalk below. The robbers fled after that, but one of them, Ricardo Diaz, 31, fell down a flight of stairs hurting his knee. Oh, shit. Aww. Police arrested him at the scene. He faces robbery, attempted robbery, assault, weapon possession, and other charges, and was released without bail. <laughs> Cops. Hey, he, hmm? they, they booked him for armed robbery and they let him go without bail? That's what hey, the article they tells me. They him? It's New York. Cops are still looking for his accomplice, who hopped into the back of a BMW sedan and fled east on 46th Street. That's probably why they released him, so that they could regroup. Xi suffers uh, cuts and bruises to his face and body and was taken by medics to a nearby hospital. He was also arrested on drug possession charges after police found ketamine in his possession. He, too, was released well, without yeah, bail. yeah, that would do it. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> yeah. See, here's uh, the thing. I'm all, I'm all about um, nonviolent offenses being people being... Uh, if you're arrested for a nonviolent offense like drug possession, minor drug possession, then, yeah, just book you, maybe maybe spend a night in jail, and then get released the next day on, you know, RO. But if it's a violent offense, nah, your ass stays in jail unless you pay it. Hmm. But if the guy gave up his accomplices and was like, I'll take you to him if you let me go, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking a look here. It is weird that they're selling marijuana in such a way. It's, it is fully legal, both recreationally and on a medicinal level, it's decriminalized in New York, so yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, but there's a there's a difference between selling a little pot, okay, and selling an entire fucking bag of it, okay, this like is a true. garbage bag, because that was a garbage bag of weed that we saw fall to the ground. So, well, here here's the problem, unfortunately, with the um, legalization on a recreational level, just state by state basis, is that there is no federal government oversight on it like there are with alcohol tobacco and other um vice and other and um pharmaceuticals you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, legal mm -hmm. drugs All right so new york hasn't come up with like new york and probably almost almost all of the states haven't come up with regulations or you know, licenses that they, they, you don't have to have a pharmaceutical license or have to pay taxes mm -hmm. um, on like the number of pot joints you sell. Um, you just have to pay a sales, a state sales tax on all your, on all your profits. That's it. And unfortunately mm -hmm. you have to do it in cash because most banks are national banks and they won't take your fucking money. They won't take checks if it was bought in with what is classified as illicit substances by on a federal level. Right, so, because they have to clear all the federal laws before they can do anything, and yeah, exactly. So, um, basically, because it's not it's not federally legal, it's not federally regulated yet, which mm -hmm. is stupid. Yeah, because imagine how much money the ATF gets, or just the government in general gets from the sales tax on each individual cigarette sold around the country in a single day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an insane amount of money. That's why the ATF takes cigarette smuggling and um cigarette and selling cigarettes without permits so seriously because it takes away from revenue from the federal government. One of the biggest things they got to deal with is shipping cigarettes, buying cigarettes cheap in one state and shipping them to another state to sell them at profit because the tax differences between each state. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um but with pot, there is no right federal regulation, so it's like who cares? We don't need a license to sell it. Don't need to regulate its sale prices, you don't need to regulate you know, the taxes that you would have to put on it. You don't even have to like verify if it's pot. It could be oregano sprinkled with um what's that what's that stuff called? What that stuff? was like artificial pot for uh, back in the day, but it's like oh, really I have no bad idea. for you. Not pot. I know what you're talking about, but no. So yeah, I mean, there's no regulation on it yet because again, those old dinosaurs up on Capitol Hill won't de won't uh, won't turn it into a want to keep it a Schedule One substance for some reason. 
Mm. Yep. And that, and when it comes down to it, the original reason was racism, and it's probably still racism. But, <sighs> but well, there's... actually, a little bit of racism, a little bit of corporate greed. Let's okay. not walk down a fair that amount path. of that because they right because there was also the hemp lobby that uh, that that caused a problem with it. But um, no, you know, there's it's funny because Colorado when it first happened. OK, Colorado did that. And like overnight, like I, I don't even think it took a week. OK, before Colorado had a complete change in the state revenue. OK, the, the, the state revenue just suddenly all the coffers suddenly became filled, you know, not just Colorado, Oregon, too, because Oregon was the first state to do it. Right. And uh, yeah, it just it just up and big, you know, oh, hey, we have money now, you know. And they've never, you know, they've never looked back and they, they never should have. This is how it should have gone. Yeah, but they, they've never looked back and their economy is relatively stable. They've got money to burn now. So does correct. Oregon. And what I yep. find really funny is that Colorado and Oregon are both those weird types of states where they're considered blue, but they have a lot of red, uh, a lot of red uh, counties because, you know, rural area. They but are, like, they are. Those red counties are benefiting greatly from all this increased revenue because it's going towards their infrastructure, the state infrastructure. It's going towards um, social programs for the state. It's going towards education. Mm -hmm. But they're just like, we don't care. Ah, fuck marijuana. Fuck the liberals. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Anywho. Sorry, we're not going to get any more political than that, folks. That that's That was a slip on my part. It just... It's something that makes me laugh and cringe at the same time, which is what this show does. It is. I'll sing right along. Do, I think do, it's do, probably do, 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 I think it's probably for the best that I uh, started on that, just to get the politics out of the way, because the rest of the show, it's going to be hilarious. Case in point, on the exact same day, June 16th, 2021, we have another incident here, and the brass balls on this fuck. The brass balls on this fuck. Daylight robbery. Brazen shoplifter fills his boots as security guard watches. He, he does what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he fills his boots. With what? Well, let's take a look. Shopli shoplifting is a crime typically characterized by stealth. Yet this week, a California crook set out to prove there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Or pilfer from a store. The Maverick miscreant was caught on Monday, uh... On camera, stuffing a garbage bag with wares inside a San Francisco Walgreens before casually exiting on his bike. Hmm. Feels his boots. That's weird. Uh, this is all while a security guard stood by, uh, filming the theft on his cell phone. Great job there, Chief. Uh, hey, hey. Hey, you know what this was? This, this was? this was the stealth person rolled a one. Okay? And the DM went, Yes, everything's fine. <laughs> no. no one sees you. <laughs> All right, well, real quick, finish the article, but I do have something to say on the. On go ahead. The yeah, I've got a, I've got a bit to go. I've got a bit to go. Uh, the crazy clip was posted on uh, Twitter. Uh, they it shows the unidentified thief uh, loading up on uh, purloined products alongside his trusty two wheeled transporter. And uh, to be fair, the uh, security guard does attempt to grab the uh, bag of pur purloined goods, but, you know, the uh, thief just kind of shrugs it off and just heads on out with his uh, bag of ill-gotten ill goods. Uh, <clears throat> oh, here we go. Uh, boot. Mean meanwhile, uh, um, uh, yeah, I assume by boot, they actually meant the basket in, f uh, in front of the bicycle. Which right, is. it's yeah. That's that's what I was gonna say. Is it says that's like a non non. Is this written thing. by the Sun or the Daily Mail? <laughs> no, this is this is Crazy America. <laughs> so I have no idea. I assume the person who wrote this was uh, English in some regard. Either way, that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> Continuing with the article. Moving on. Meanwhile, two people, one dressed in a security guard's uniform, simply stand in the same aisle a few feet away, recording proceedings on their phones. The shoplifter then jumps on his bike and breezily pedals past the pair as the guard makes a, for a forlorn attempt to swipe the bag of booty. 
He is last seen riding out through the store's automatic front doors and off into the metaphorical sunset. This just happened at the Walgreens on uh, Gog and Fell Streets in San Francisco. Hashtag no consequences. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that if they got him blatantly on video, okay, that there's going to be some consequences for this one. And I have a feeling that he's a repeat customer. Here's yeah, a, he, on be, on, in, sorry, go on. In defense of the security guard, he's working for a corporation who is not going to pay his medical fee, medical fees or the insurance should he do something to stop the guy and get hurt. Right. So this he's is, doing his job. It is to observe, identify, and make a report. And you're this not is, the only... This is, whoop, go on. This is actually the same same thing I was going to point out about. Uh, uh, did you happen to notice the uh, the clip that's going around about the employee that uh, watches some kids set some things on fire in an aisle, and then just nopes? You know, he no. just looks at it, looks at it, and goes, "Okay, I'll I'll find I'll see if I can find it for you." Seems a little uh, bit off yeah, subject. He, sorry. It well, no, it's it's he doesn't get paid enough to to worry about a fire in the middle of an aisle. Fair and that, that was my whole point. That was my whole point. And to be fair, uh, you two uh, aren't the only ones who have a, a similar opinion. There's one respondent to the uh, Twitter post that said the theft was handled correctly. This is a quote mm -hmm. from them. <clears throat> the security guard got it all on uh, got got it all on video, and no store patron was injured in the process. Win win. The video will be circulated throughout the Bay the Bay Area law enforcement. Dude is screwed. Less encouraged yeah, I mean, commenters viewed the incident as just another example of the city's general lawlessness, however. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. San Francisco bullshit. is not that bad. Well, It's not any worse than any other major metropolitan no, area. No city is that bad. You know, this lawlessness bullshit comes from, um, you know, comes from, like, um, questionable, questionable media leanings, and let's just go with that. And um, yeah. I just, you know, oh my God, you know, this, this is a city full of uh, of all these policies, and and they're the lawless city, and they're so yeah, lax that. and so policy. It's like, where are the cops? Won't somebody think of the cops? Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, nobody got hurt. Okay, we got a video of the suspect. It's going to be plastered everywhere. He's not going to be able to make a move without getting nabbed. So. Exactly. You know, this did not require a halt or I'll shoot. Yeah, this was not a uh, dangerous situation. It's just a brazen theft, in all honesty. Again, this was a stop or I'll say stop again. <laughs> I'm actually I bet you anything. If you go through the through the uh, through the store's security footage itself, you would probably find the security guard approaching him, telling him to stop and the guy telling him to fuck off. So what does the security guard do? Pulls out his phone and starts recording. Yep. Yep. It's like that. It's like that Robin Williams joke to uh, fucking <laughs> give context to uh, Gray's little thing. It's no longer Big Brother. It's Little Snitch. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Okay. One last softcore article for tonight. And uh, it's another case of, well... Well, I'll I'll let you determine what this is another case of because uh, you just can't write this shit, man. June twenty first, twenty twenty one. Motorist named Booze arrested for. Go on, take a guess. Go on. Uh, jaywalking. Nope. Go on, Sherlock. Take a guess. Come on. Oh, I'm just gonna say um, uh, gun smuggling. No, I mean come on. Come on, come on. Eating they're... eating eating a burger with two hands while driving. Nope. Come on, their <laughs> name texting they're... on your texting on his phone. Come on, their name is Booze. Come on, help me out here. <laughs> we know what it is, damn it. We're just trying to prolong it. Just, just do it. <laughs> yep, this one was arrested for fucking drunk driving. Oh man, just Her last name is fucking Booze. This is Kanisha Booze. What? Fucking family I, has the last name Booze. I, I can given given all the family names that I know, I can see it being a family name. But 
it's, just, well, it, it's means something in um, another language, another culture's language that has nothing to do with the, you know, connotation that we've given, you know, I mean, uh, that slang for alcohol. I mean, yes, but at the same time, it's yeah, just so it is funny. funny. It's kind of an interesting, funny coincidence, but I mean, yeah. Miss Booze, did you really think it was a good idea to get yourself plastered and drunk drive while your last name is Booze? Yeah. So, this is a Florida woman, by the way. She was arrested Oh, what a shock. Oh, wait, yeah, I know, so right? I'm surprised. surprised. She was arrested for drunk driving after allegedly slamming her car into a Taco Bell sign and then fleeing the scene. <laughs> That's probably the this, most improvement that Taco Bell's had in a decade. <laughs> this is not how you drive when drunk to get tacos. This isn't how it works. Um, no, if anything, you don't even drive the car at all. You just take your drunk, you just walk your drunken ass to the drive to the drive through, and just walk up to the speaker. That is a they, real um, incident. That's actually happened. They can't um, in in, uh, in the state of Illinois. They can't do that here. Um, it has to do. There's some. There's some odd law, okay, about the fact that that's uh, that is actually a worse of a sanitary condition or something, you know, to the restaurant. So under restaurant sanitary law, they don't allow people to do that here. Um, Most uh, restaurants won't allow people to walk through the drive-through. Yeah, no, this is I mean, one of the safety issue. But at the same time, I kind of feel like why. Yeah, because cars. Who cares? <laughs> Anywho, it's a good way to get hit by a car, but it is. Yeah, that's true. But that's the person's own damn fault. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, like, if a kid came up on a skateboard and he wanted to order like a Big Mac or something, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, give it to him. Who cares? <laughs> Anywho, <clears throat> does he have money? Then, then take it. So, Kanisha Booze, 34, she was busted late uh, that Friday evening following a car crash near her home in St. Petersburg. She was charged with DUI involving property damage, leaving the scene of an accident, and driving with a suspended or revoked license. Whoops. Uh, mm -hmm. That might be jail time right there. That's Ain't a, that yep. always the way. Booze was released from the county jail that Saturday morning after posting... $1,750 bond on the three misdemeanor counts. Booze, a mother of three, works at the Taco Bell where the crash occurred. Oh. Well, <laughs> your ass be fired now, woman. <laughs> yep. We're going to take... Well, it's either her ass can be fired or we're going to take the uh, the repairs out of your check when every they, week. When they talk about ringing the bell, that's not what they mean. Yeah, no. <laughs> So according to an arrest report, Boo struck a tree, the Taco Bell sign, and the eatery's water meter. Ooh, that's not that good. That is going to be expensive because the city will force them to pay for that. Yes, they okay. will. If she happened to pull up the line in the ground, Taco Bell is liable to get that line fixed, not the city. Most times the city, the city controls the meter and they control the main pipeline that runs down the street. But a lot of times, one nasty trick the cities will do is they will say, oh, OK, the pipe that goes from the street, you know, from the main pipeline to your meter. Yeah, that's your responsibility. So if your front yard starts leaking, you're the one that gets to pay to dig it up. Yeah, you know? that and this is this is Florida. So that's probably what they do. Yep. Yep. So. Booze was subsequently collared after being spotted speeding through two red lights near the restaurant. When questioned by police, a wobbly booze exhibited, quote, bloodshot, watery eyes, a dazed and blank expression on her face, and an odor of an alcoholic beverage on her breath, end quote. Uh, that is a uh, note from the police who say that booze declined to provide breath samples. Booze's rap sheet includes seven separate convictions for driving without a license. She has also been convicted for marijuana possession and grand theft. Severin, oh my gosh, how does she get a hold of a car? Uh, yeah, apparently I very easily. I, I assume they're given to her by family. The only I mean, thing I can think of. I, I can't remember if, like, 
at some point, if there are so many traffic violations on someone's record, even with a suspended license, they just impound the car. They're like, nope, you don't get this anymore. That's fine, I'll get another one. Ah, uh, I just... You can't write this shit, man. Well, I suppose you can. Given the fact that I just <laughs> read it. But <laughs> you get my point. Just someone with the last name Booze just having this wild, wacky adventure for us to point and laugh at in, in the future. Ah, uh, just... <sighs> well, I suppose it's time for us to take our second and final music break for the evening and to move on to the hardcore material in just a bit. So, uh, unless you have anything else you want to say, boys. I can't remember the, the, the lyrics to Deacon Booze, otherwise I would have Keisha Booze on tap. Um. <laughs> well, on that note, we'll be right back with the hardcore material, folks. You're listening to Trademark Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. And I've got no witty segment, uh, segue for, for that. Let's go. We'll be right back, folks. Welcome back, passengers, to Trademark's Train Wreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. It's time to start the hardcore material for tonight, and oh boy, there is a lot to talk about tonight. I'm sure there is. There nice. certainly is. Let's talk about another Florida woman. Now, hmm, let's actually talk briefly about relationships and how sometimes you can be in a pretty toxic one. I'm not going to dive too deep into the subject, but there are some signs that one should pay attention to to kind of get the gist that you're with the wrong kind of person. Case in point. I told you, I'm not dating you. <laughs> no, great. Case in point here. Woman beat girlfriend over sleep talk. What? Oh, uh, what? Here's the tagline. Victim, 21, heard, quote, talking in her sleep about an ex, end quote. Oh. oh. Yeah. Well, fuck this woman. Yep. No, don't fuck this woman. Um. Well, let's take a look at the article here. <clears throat> a Florida woman pummeled her girlfriend after hearing the victim talking in her sleep about an ex. Responding late Sunday evening to a 911 call from a neighbor who reported a fight in progress, cops contacted a, the 21-year-old victim at the apartment she shares with Alexis Taley, her 23-year-old girlfriend. The victim told police that she was asleep in the Tampa Bay residence, uh, Tampa Bay area residence, when she was awoken by Tally, who, quote, told her she was talking in her sleep about an ex. An ensuing verbal argument turned physical, the victim said, and Tally, quote, began to punch her in the face. Jesus uh. Christ. Cops noted the victim had visible swelling to the right side of her face, consistent with her statement. While Tally acknowledged arguing with her girlfriend after hearing her sleep talking, she claimed the dispute, quote, was only verbal and not physical. Uh, no. Yeah, sorry, oh. well, we got a victim saying, I've that she beat the crap out of me and um you know you've got visible signs of that and don't work that well oh it gets better as for the victim's injuries tally said that uh they were sustained during a previous disorder and not from tonight oh a previous oh, disorder oh that's, that's oh, okay great. oh that's so much that's, better that's so much better that's so yeah <laughs> don't worry she was arrested for domestic battery and booked into the county jail uh, she was released from custody uh, the day pr uh, the day prior to this article's posting, which was uh, June fifteenth. So on June fourteenth, she was released on two thousand five hundred dollars bond and has been ordered by a judge to have no contact with the victim. Tally's rap sheet includes a prior battery arrest that resulted in a no contest plea. She is facing an enhanced felony charge for allegedly punching her girlfriend. 
Also, according to court documents, Tally has been uh, convicted of marijuana possession, DUI, and disorderly conduct. She's also currently facing a felony marijuana possession charge stemming from her arrest last month following a traffic stop, during which deputies found two baggies filled with pot in the vehicle she was driving. Ah, uh, that's a bullshit charge. Yeah, I hate that. Well, either way, it. doesn't change the fact that this woman has some issues. Yeah, I didn't say she didn't. Yeah, I didn't say she didn't. It's <laughs> of just, course you know, not. The marijuana charge, fuck that. Just... Like, we've all heard the exaggerated, well, I don't want to say exaggerated stories, but, like, more like the stories of how much uh, toxic lovers exaggerate their paranoia. Mm -hmm. Talking in, someone talking in their sleep about a former fling. What the fuck? Yeah, unless you're the military, talking in your sleep is not an issue. Okay, for somebody that you're, you know, that you're living with. That's just not how, that's not how any of this works. Okay. Yeah. Now, however, as I can attest by my uncle, who who was given a, uh, not a dishonorable, um, but they gave him like a medical discharge. Okay, because he literally would talk in his sleep and answer questions. Oh, shit. Um, Yeah. So they basically, <laughs> the Navy basically said. Yeah, we can't have li- that. You're a liability, you're a, sir. You're a liability, sir. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one, no, not so much. This is not. This is not okay in any form. Of light. you can't control what you're dreaming unless you're a lucid dreamer. And even then, lucid dreaming is not like a foolproof fucking thing. Believe me, I know. Like that's. Yeah, you can't control what you dream and you can't control what you say while you are dreaming. So to fucking flip the fuck out and thinking you're cheating on me in your dream. How dare you? The fuck man. Anywho, we've got another one. And this one's a double feature. This one is a fucking double double feature. feature. Picture show. From RKO. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, this is a... Appara- I, I'm, I'm assuming that the, these two incidents happened in the same day, and thus they are in the same article. And there's also another reason why they're in the same article. <laughs> welcome to the Daily Florida Police Blotter. Uh, this Welcome to this very special edition, the Chicken Crimes Edition. Chicken Crimes, huh? Chicken crimes. These are two. If two, uh, if, yes. If somebody boinked the chicken, I'm hanging up. No, no, um, no, no, no. This <laughs> isn't. This isn't about that. These are two uh, domestic violence cases that uh, somehow involved fucking poultry. What not cooked the, poultry? Not the act. Not the act. Oh, okay. Cooked okay. poultry. I cooked just told poultry. You I was going to. I no, just no, 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 no. Hang up if that was what this is about. No, not that. Okay, here we go. Case number one. A brotherly argument over some chicken turned violent uh, on a Monday evening when a Florida man allegedly threw a knife at his sibling. That knife actually got stuck in the victim's right leg, but don't worry, uh, the victim will uh, only uh, require stitches, so the victim is fine. Let's take a look at the dipshit behind this case, though. This is Messiah Harris Smith, 19. He's facing a uh, felony ba- uh, felony aggravated battery charge in connection with the June 14th incident at his family's St. Petersburg residence. Uh, the victim, who told police he did not want his uh, brother prosecuted, will need to re- uh, need to receive stitches. Uh... This is according to a an arrest affidavit that does not further describe the chicken argument. Harris, who has pleaded not guilty, will was released uh, June fifteenth on his own recognizance. Harris Smith was arrested earlier this year for allegedly, uh, well, not being nice to his mother. Let's just say. Shit! Why are they letting these people out? This guy threw a knife at his brother. Yeah, sister. Actually, I think it was. Uh, no, brother. Brother. Oh, okay. Uh, 
although it does not say specifically it does not identify the uh the victim though it does say a brotherly argument over some chicken so oh, okay there we go there i'm going to take a stab no pun intended at uh call it uh saying that it might have been a brother well don't let us run afoul of details so let's go hunt. Uh... oh my god both of you stop <laughs> <laughs> well we haven't well on the flip side I'd rather get stabbed in the leg <laughs> On the flip side, we also have the other chicken case that occurred in Florida, where a woman is facing a domestic battery charge uh, after allegedly pelting her boyfriend in the face and chest with a plate of chicken. Investigators charged that Jennifer Booth, 43, struck the 56-year-old victim with the chicken while the couple was eating last Wednesday night on their porch on their Bradenton home. Booth's companion... Hmm? It's okay. It's okay. She only winged him. Oh. <laughs> Booth's companion who cooked dinner was not injured by the paltry fusillade. He told police that Booth, quote, became violent, end quote, during a verbal argument and, quote, picked up the paper plate of chicken and threw it in my face, end quote. After the man called 911, Booth was arrested and booked into the Manatee County Jail on the misdemeanor rap. She was released Friday on 50, uh, sorry, $500 bond. Booth, who works at a Lakewood hospital, has three prior arrests, most recently 2015 domestic violence, according to a court filing that does not include case dispositions. While Booth and the victims share a surname, a pretrial services report lists her marital status as single, while an arrest report identifies the victim as her boyfriend. Huh. That's a fucking I mean, Booth question isn't mark. An uncommon name. I mean, maybe depends on how long they've depends on how long they've been living together, um, because they might not have changed any paperwork, but they might be common law. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, possible. The article goes on to describe that uh, she's one of those uh, dickheads on Facebook who uh, really likes hunting, and I will leave it at that. I don't want to uh, give the uh, fucking details about this shit. <laughs> she wears a red hat, doesn't she? Mm, I can either confirm nor deny. I actually don't know. Uh, it could be possible. I don't know. You said anyway. cat scratch fever in the background, right? <laughs> so, anyway, so yeah, so a, a double whammy. People don't fucking... don't don't use good cooked chicken as a weapon. Yeah. Like, and how about you just not assault your assault your significant others or family? That works too. Yeah, just like. The hell, man. You know what? I I would buy it if it were like, if it were like a, a a regular abuse thing. Okay, maybe you know maybe there was some regular abuse going on, but that doesn't sound like it here, especially with her her rap sheet. So, um, just yeah, just to just stop throwing food at people. Stop it. Um, well, I mean, food fights are kind of hilarious. Well, in certain contexts, yes. In certain um, contexts, like, uh, I I recommend looking at the uh, ice cream sandwich video, uh, Food Fight, because it describes uh, uh, an incident in ice cream sandwiches, uh, school, uh, school life, I think it was high school or whatever, where the kids actually planned a food fight, but a majority of the students were like, we gotta get the fuck out of here, man! Because they didn't want to... Because in the real world, food fights are disgusting messes that p uh, people don't want to get involved in unless they are rebellious little shits. Or unless you decided, oh, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> and then the school punished everybody in, uh, in the cafeteria. <laughs> Correct. If you're, if you're into animated food fights... Go watch uh, Ruby R W B Y. Oh. Uh, one of the best, one of the best cafeteria food fights you have ever seen. <laughs> ah yes, yeah. back in the heyday of Ruby before it went to shit. And yeah, I said it. Fight me. I stopped watching it at the end of uh, the lamp. They got the lamp out of the vault. That's when I stopped watching. Yeah, so. I pretty much stopped watching somewhere. I'd like <sighs> midway through season four when it succumbed to Harry Potter syndrome. You're the special one, and you're going to this amazing school with all your friends. 
oh, now there, now there's a great evil, and now you gotta go defeat it, and now everything sucks. Uh, anywho, complaints aside, yes, this, anywho. this was most of this was most of Ruby, to be honest. I mean, um, yes. Anywho, I've got a, I've got one last article here for the hardcore material. It's a f- fucking special case. I had to look up and down this thing to make sure that nobody was uh, injured because some people could have been injured. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised you let that one, that first chicken abuse article go, because the guy got fucking stabbed in the leg. I mean, yes, but that person did uh, get stitches, so I'm letting it slide on the merit that, you know, at at least uh, nothing more than stitches was required for that case. I mean, the man wasn't boned, so... <sighs> yeah, essentially. Anywho, here's the last article, and my fucking lord. Booby trap type explosives found during eviction in California. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay. Well. Alrighty then. (laughs) June 18th, 2021. Oh boy. An entire neighborhood in Stockton, California was evacuated after authorities found booby trap type explosives while trying to evict a resident. <sighs> yeah. Let's just take let's just take a stroll and see how we ended up here. The San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office sent deputies to serve an eviction notice and a restraining order to Robert Bradford, 35. When the officers arrived, they got into a physical altercation with Bradford, but managed to take him into custody. During the struggle, they noticed the explosive devices in the home. Officials said that Bradford knew he was being evicted and rigged pipe bombs to injure the responding officers. Knew it. Knew they were pipe bombs. Yeah. I hate to yeah. say it, and I'm not going to tell you how, but they are the easiest to make. They mm. are very much easiest to make, yes. Sadly. I mean, there's a reason they're in abundance in Left for Dead. When they arrived to serve the involved party, he attacked our deputy, and so during the struggle, he was able to be detained, and they were able to see the several booby-trapped explosive devices around them. That's a quote from Sandra Mendez, spokes- spokesperson for the sheriff's office. They called the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team and asked neighbors to leave their homes for a few hours while they disarmed the explosives. They told us to leave for two hours, and it's exceeded well over two hours, one of Bradford's neighbors <laughs> told the local news. I stay in my house and I leave him alone. I just stay away. Officials said it took longer than expected because they found multiple devices inside the home, along with multiple of weapons, including handguns, long guns, and an axe. The bomb squad rendered the devices safe and determined that they were not explosive. Bradford was taken to the hospital following his arrest and was transferred to the San Joaquin County Jail after he was released. Officials did not provide details about his injuries. He is facing multiple weapons charges along with charges of violating a court order and battery on a peace officer. Peace officer. I assume that's a typo and that's meant to be police officer. Oops. No, peace, peace officer. officer is actually an old term that is it's no longer term. used. <laughs> oh, for obvious well, reasons. No, the media the media continuously tries to use it, um, even though the phrasing doesn't really apply. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say police officer. Let's call a spade a spade. Anyway, yeah. uh, Bradford's bail was set at over one million dollars. Can I just say, <laughs> what the well, fuck? No, you cannot. <laughs> What the fuck? You know, the oh. only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of is that he wanted to, you know, he wanted to go out and take the officers with him. Um, you know, this was a, I this mean, was that's, maybe, that's it, unfortunately you know, very... if they were, if they were truly explosive, because remember the bomb squad basically said these, these aren't explosive, which means either he fucked them up. Okay. And, I, well, I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna comment on that because my comment would be, "How would you fuck up a pipe bomb?" Mm. But either, either he did that, or he truly didn't mean 
to make them explosive and they were they were threats only which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because if you're being evicted okay what are you going to do threaten them so you can stay in in the house no that's not how that works well that's um, how it works in this guy's mind apparently yeah I, this, nah, that, this uh, i hate to say it but this feels like disturbingly close to a D&D character that i've created for uh one of our uh, uh, games. I don't know if I'm actually going to release it. Uh, we play a Waterdeep game and we've gotten past the, uh, the the module story. And I've created a character called the Multi-Wizard. He's this crazy fucking wizard who uh, the city has tried to evict because they want to put a, a marketplace over his property. And granted, they were going to... Uh, uh, give him the funds to find a new property, but the multi-wizard was just like, fuck you, I'm going to rip a hole through reality and summon a Sears. Which is a whole other story in and of fuck itself. Fuck you, I'm suction cup man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is this is a fucking <laughs> suction cup. This is a suction cup man fucking moment. Get out of the house. No. Fuck you, I'll stay in my house. You know, the the only thing that remind this reminds me of strangely is it is my brain takes a leap of leap of logic here if you're going to blow up the resident that you're being kicked out for okay that's not hurting anybody okay it's not even hurting the bank it's hurting your neighbors more than anything else or police officers or yeah. you know whoever shows up for this if you if your problem is the lenders okay and i'm not talking landlords because landlords are a different type of shit if your problem is the lenders, then you need to go out, go and find an an Emilio Estevez movie. Um, it's gonna take me a minute to find the title of it. It was from the eighties. Uh... The one thing that I hate about this article more than the intentions that this person had is the fucking mugshot. That smug fucking look of like, gotcha. Yeah, there it is. The film's the film's name is Wisdom, and it's a very weird, odd little film. Um, I won't I won't completely spoil is it spoil it, but it's he uh he goes around and he starts like robbing banks, okay. But while he's in the banks, okay, because this was during the this was made during the farming crisis, okay, where farms were being foreclosed on and so forth. Uh -huh. While he's while he's robbing the banks, he burns mortgages. Okay, he goes in there and he just sets fire to everybody's mortgage paperwork. Okay, and it's a brilliant it's a brilliant point on you know how fragile the mortgage system is in uh, in the U.S. and you know, and it it's it's like an odd little Robin Hood ish film, you know, where he's he's eventually hailed as a hero and blah blah blah. And there's a whole bunch of other things going on. But uh it's it's that's the thing that comes to mind here is if you're going to fight anyone, fight the banks in question. Okay, mm -hmm. or the people at the top. Don't don't bomb the police or bomb your landlord. Yeah. Okay. Although quite honestly, landlords are a different type of another type of evil. <laughs> Another type of evil, yes. Um, in fact, that's the landlords. A lot of the reason that we're having the the housing crisis that we have now, with the housing prices and so forth, are people people bought up rental properties, people bought up houses and said, "No, oh, well, we're not gonna we're not gonna live in them. We're just gonna rent them out." Rent you know, them out. And uh, rent them out, and you can make money doing that. And you know, now we've got a whole bunch of houses that we can't sell, and nobody can afford to rent because everybody jacked all the money up. So. Of course. Of course. So. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this, man. This is another case of someone very desperate to have their way. And just stupidity ensues. Yeah, I still don't I still don't get the these were not explosive. I okay, unless they hmm. unless they told that to the public to prevent like some sort of hysteria on it yeah that is kind of just a weird thing it's like oh i mean we found explosives but they weren't actually explosives i 
Which was it? I can yeah. only assume that it's like a typo on the article's part, or it's just weird phrasing. Either, either yes, the bomb squad went in, t- took a look at the pipe bombs, and went, yeah, these things wouldn't have gone off even if he, if he, even if he wanted them to. Or they went in and rendered them not explosive because to 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 look at that quote from the article again, <clears throat> the bomb squad rendered the devices safe and determined they were not explosive. So oh, I, OK. So, yeah, maybe that's the context here. Maybe that's that's they went in and rendered them non explosive. Yes. OK, so, yeah, because because that was the, right. But that was like the, what the puzzler was is like, wait, why did. Yeah, why did it take why did it take hours for them to determine that these were not explosive devices? Um, I don't know. You're either very good at your job or either very bad at your job. Uh, so, I believe that's going to be it for uh, this week's episode of the train wreck. Just oh boy, people are getting nuts out there. We're getting. Uh, I don't know. I'm at a loss for uh, words this week, honestly. It's um, it's not as it, I used to. I used to believe that my country at least had some sort of base level sanity, and it's getting harder and harder for me to believe that now. Oh, dude, so. that's that is a child's fucking vision. I, that's the thing I used to believe, but then I went to middle school and. Uh, yes, I I went through my fucking emo phase, but at the same time, I was like, wow. Everyone's a fucking idiot. <laughs> ah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Ways at you and Gen X. Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Anywho, that's it for uh, this week's episode of the Train Wreck. Hope you all enjoyed listening. Uh, with me here today was, of course, Greymane. Yes, everybody. Remember, check your pipe bomb designs. And Sherlock. Yep. Have a good night, y'all. See you next week, maybe. We'll see. Uh, as always, this has been Trademark Train Wreck. We're a show featured on Celestia Radio. I'll fan them all the time. Our theme song was created by Marivex, and our banner art was created by Court Awesome. You can find their social media, our social media, and all of the links to all the articles we discussed in the description below in the YouTube version of this show. Uh, where I highly uh, request that you uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you are so willing. Th- uh, thank you very much in advance. Buy the man a coffee. Yes, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's just about it. So once again, thank you for listening. My name is Trademark, and good night. My mind is blown. <laughs>